Hi guys, welcome back to part two in my series on CRT TVs and controlling them. In this video, we're going to be going over turning the TV on and off and being able to flick through the TV channels that we specify. In the next video, we're going to be looking at security cameras as well. So definitely subscribe if you want to know when that's coming out. All right, guys, that's enough of me. Let's get into it. Okay, from where we last left off, we had set up a viewport in a CRT shader and managed to get the video auto-playing on the video player when we start the scene. Now let's get some control over this TV. The first thing we need to do is add an animation player to control the on and off state. We'll create a new animation called on-off. Not slash, that's not allowed, I should probably know better. Uh, for this animation, we'll need to alter the CRT's mesh. I've set the model to have a separate material over the screen. We can control the transparency to create an on or off effect. The material is under surface too. The material's names haven't flowed over from Blender, but that's okay. Uh, so there's two values we need to control. Under flags, we'll need to control transparency. Pretty clear what that does. Then we'll need to control the alpha of the albedo value. While we're here, let's pick a nice off color for the screen and blue gray is what I went for. Okay, let's add some keyframes. We're going to start in the off position and transition to on. So we'll want our first keys to be our chosen color and transparency as off. You might need to change the snap here since the animation will be very short. I'm going to start my transition at 0.1 second by keying a transparency as on and then setting my screen to be fully alpha at 0.2 seconds. Then I'll adjust the animation to be 0.2 seconds. Okay, so let's test this out. And I'm noticing a little bit of a hitch when it transitions to transparent. Um, so what I tried to do was basically just delete that first color setting and it seemed to work a lot better after that. Okay, so let's add a script to control this and add videos to our channel. Let me just name this CRT underscore TV and I'll have to remove all this junk. I should probably get in the habit of not including that when I open a script. Okay, so the first two variables that we will need is access to our video player, which is inside our viewport. And then we'll also need access to the animation player that we just created. Then we'll need to set up a path to the folder that holds all our videos. I've prepared a folder with only WebM videos in it. Uh, you can drag this folder into the editor and get the path as a string. Then we'll need to add an array to hold each channel. Each element will be the path to the video and a variable to keep track of what our current channel is. This will be an integer and we'll initialize it as zero. As we increment through each channel, we'll increase this variable until it reaches the size of the array. And finally, we'll need a Boolean to tell us whether the TV is on or off. Okay, so the first function we're going to make is called get channels. This is going to loop through the directory that we just set up and fetch each video and put it into an array. This is basically the same as a snippet from the Godot docs page. We're going to instantiate a new directory, open it up, passing in the path that we set up before. This function opens an existing directory and returns an error code of OK. So we can check for that. For the list directory begin function, we're going to pass in true and true. We do not want to list our navigation and we don't have any hidden files. Then we're going to use get next. This is a function that increments and returns the next element in the directory. And at the end of the directory returns an empty string. So we can use a while statement to loop through the directory until we hit the end, which will break the loop. For each file, we'll append the channels array with the channel path plus the file name. This will give us a full path to each file. Then we'll use get next to increment to the next file. For the else statement, we'll put a printout just in case the path we put in the channel path doesn't exist or gets deleted. We will call this function at the ready and then to test it, we'll print out the channels array. If any of your files aren't ending in WebM, go and move them out of the directory so it only has videos in it. Okay, let's see if that works. And you can see in the output, each element of the array is a path to a WebM video. Okay, so let's start controlling the TV. 
we'll add an input function after ready, then use event dot is action pressed action key, uh, which is an input that I set up already. Pick whatever is appropriate for you, or you can copy these. Then we'll need to check and make sure the player is within our collision area. I'm using overlapping areas for mine since I've got an interaction area on my player controller, but it could also be overlapping bodies if you want to check the player's body instead. Then if the power is off, we'll play the on off animation, set the power to be true and set the video stream to be the current channel. Loading in audio and video is the same. So this method could actually be used to do a radio as well. If you want to try and do that, then in the else statement, we will play the on off animation in reverse, stop the video player and set power to be false. This should give us something that we can use to toggle the power on and off. And we'll just go over and test this out here. And it looks like it's working as expected. Okay, let's increment through the channels. We'll use the change channel key with the action press function. Uh, we'll use the same check as the previous to make sure the player is present and the power is on. We will increment the current channel by one, but before we update the video player, we want to check to see if the current channel is equal to the array size. And if it is, set it back to zero. Then we'll update the video stream and call play again. This will update the video player and it will play the next video. And let's go over and test it out. And it looks like it's working. Now we can flick through the channels and turn the TV off and on. And when we turn it back on, it'll be on on the channel we left it on. This is a very basic script to control the TV. Chances are this isn't going to be a central part of your game. It's just a nice bit of immersion. There's a lot more you could do to build this out. Uh, for instance, there's no error checking. So if you have a folder with more than just WebM files in it, um, it's going to just display static when you end up on that um, element in the array um, until you find you know, something that's in a WebM and then it will work. Um, I dropped a PNG just to test this out. It, it doesn't crash, which is good. Um, it just won't play anything, which might not be what you want. Okay guys, that's all for this one. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. It's a bit niche, um, but definitely hit that like button if you want to see more stuff like this. Uh, in the next video, we're going to be setting up a security system and displaying the active camera on the CRT TV and hopefully be able to cycle through each active security camera. Uh, that'll be coming out in the next two weeks, so definitely subscribe if you want to get notified when that comes out. All right, guys, that's all for this one. I am Isaac, I'm Shaftev, and I'll see you next time.